Are you suffering from the net dollar impact? Today on the Landlord Coach Daily Ish Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Landlord Coach Daily-ish show. My name is Mark Dolfini, your host and Landlord Coach. It's awesome to see you today. So uh, I was going over a conversation that I had with a previous student from several uh, several weeks ago, and we were talking about something. They were wanting to get into lower-end properties originally, and this is, a, this is a student that I had from years ago. And we're reviewing, I was reviewing something we were talking about, and we we're talking about the net dollar Impact. So this is the conversation we were having. This is just a, re- a refresher for some of you because maybe you've heard me talk about this before. But are you suffering from what is called the net dollar effect or the net dollar impact? So <clears throat> right now there are several people. There's generally two two people in the world right now in terms of, of real estate investing. People who are investing in real estate and people who want to be investing in real estate. So one of the two things, and the reason for that, and the reason there's such fervor right now, and if you are in either one of those two two camps, let me know. Who are you? Are you in real estate or do you want to be in real estate? I would love to know either way and who's who's out there joining. It's good to see you all. Um, got some comments already. Hello, Rebecca. Nice to see you. Um, so it's really interesting, though, is that there's two different schools of thought going on right now of people who are in real estate and who want to be in real estate. So the the suffer, if you're suffering from the net dollar effect, now before I get too far down the road, because I always forget this, and it's not because I'm trying to be like pushing my book on you, but um, if you are looking, if you are interested in getting a free copy of the Time Wealthy Investor 2.0, you just go head over to landlordcoach.com forward slash videos, scroll down a little bit, and you can get a copy for free. Just pay for shipping, and then I'll send it over to you. Anyway, that's all I have. So anyway, the net dollar effect. What am I even talking about with this? Well, here's the thing. So I'm talking to a couple different people who are really like to invest in properties where they can spend as little as possible on the property. You get like a thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar property, rent it for seven eight hundred nine dollars you know seven eight seven hundred eight hundred dollars a month and then you know because the mortgage would be so low on those properties right the cash flow would be pretty good at least from a percentage basis the cash flow would be pretty good totally understand it totally get it and i'm going to tell you why that's a terrible idea (laughs) there's a couple of things that go on and one of the main things is the net dollar effect so we're going to talk about that here in just a second but those lower end properties, they bring on a set of problems that maybe you haven't really thought through. And this is just something that I want, wanted to talk about today. So we're going to get to the net dollar effect and what that is here in a second. But <clears throat> a couple of different things. When I was investing in properties that were like that, they were properties that, that was attracting a clientele that were really, really hard to manage. So most of those properties that were thirty or forty thousand dollar properties needed a very high degree of maintenance, and because I was buying properties that needed a high degree of maintenance, I was attracting clientele that needed a very high degree of management. So the problem was that I was handling all this nonsense stuff that was basically just literally just I felt like I was raising someone else's adult child, and I was dealing with like grown up adult problems. When I started shifting my my inventory over to, well, let me just say it this way. <laughs> Some of it was shifted for me because I lost I lost a lot of properties back in 2008. I mean, I lost $4.5 million in, of properties in about eight months. I mean, it was horrible. So when I lost those properties, when those properties came out of my inventory, the properties I was able to keep were some of the nicer ones. Not all of them. Some of I lost properties all over the place. But some of the nicer properties that I was able to keep I was able to put more money into them and I was able to to deal, you know, and manage those much better, right? So let's go back. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit in terms of what I'm talking about with the net dollar effect. The net dollar effect relates to the amount of rents that come in based on the amount of maintenance that, that is basically budgeted for, all right? So if you think about it, many people, when they're doing their cash flow analysis on the back of a napkin or some elaborate Excel spreadsheet, when you're doing those cash flow analysis problems, a lot of times people, and I was doing the same thing, okay, this isn't judgment, this is confession too, but when I was doing the cash flow analysis, 
I was doing it as a percentage of the rent. So think about that for a second. When I was do when I was budgeting for maintenance items, I would say, okay, well, 10% of the rent was going to be my maintenance. Well, how in the world does that make any sense? Just because my my rent was say $800, but budgeting 10% for maintenance made absolutely no sense. Now, this is where the net dollar effect comes in. If you have a higher, let's say for argument's sake that you have a, a newer and therefore higher rent property. So let's say for argument's sake you get a three bedroom, two bath property that rents for $1,500 a month and it's a newer property and you're gonna budget for 10%. How does it make sense that you're gonna budget a, a different number, a different net number for maintenance on a newer property than one that is older that is likely going to need a lot more maintenance. It doesn't make any sense, does it? So if I have a $1,500 a month property, I'm going to be budgeting 10%, which is $150. If I have $800 a month property, how does it make sense that I'm budgeting only $80? It doesn't make any sense. So let me put this into more real terms for you. What does a toilet cost? A toilet, like a toilet in a box, right? I don't know if anybody's out there <laughs> listening to this live, but yeah, I got a couple of people. So a toilet in a box roughly costs about 120-ish dollars, right? We'll go ahead and throw in maybe an extra hundred bucks for, you know, say you've got to buy a toilet, whatever, you know, something's going on with it. It's just cheaper to buy a new toilet. So you buy a new toilet, you have it, you pay a hundred bucks to have it installed, right? Now, granted, they were in an inflationary environment, so... This time next year is probably going to be five thousand dollars, but whatever. Let's just assume that it's a that it's two hundred and twenty-five dollars to have it installed. Here's where the net dollar impact comes into play. Is that net dollar impact going to be a higher impact on your higher end property, on your higher, more expensive property, or is it going to be higher impact on your lower end, your eight hundred dollar month property? Well, obviously, it's going to have a greater impact on the lower end property. So when you're taking into effect the net dollar impact, the net dollar effect. A toilet costs what a toilet costs. A furnace costs what a furnace costs. I will make, obviously, there are higher, you know, di there are different furnaces that you need to buy for bigger properties I'm talking about, right? But, but ultimately, generally, they're going to be about the same, right? For the most part, with, with a few exceptions. So a refrigerator is going to cost what a refrigerator costs and all of these different things. So if you have a higher end property, I'm not talking high end property. I'm just talking higher end. Not, we're talking about not investing in the war zones. We're talking about investing in good, middle-class, boring neighborhoods. That's what I'm talking about. The net dollar effect is much lower on those types of properties than they are on the $30,000 properties that are located in the war zones. I'm not saying don't invest there. I'm just saying make sure that you're taking into, you're taking into account the net dollar effect on those properties. Because a lot of times the biggest thing, the biggest frustration I hear from, from rental property investors all the time is that they get these wild swings in cash flow. And those, it's those wild swings in cash flow that really frustrate the heck out of them because they did not budget appropriately for those capital expenditure items that come up or even just general maintenance items. Remember, for all of those expense line items that you don't budget for adequately enough, is a job that you create for yourself. Let me say that again. So every individual line item, every individual expense item that you don't budget for adequately enough becomes a job that you create for yourself. So what am I talking about? If you don't budget highly enough for maintenance, guess what? You created a maintenance job for yourself. If you don't budget highly enough for leasing, right? If you, or you didn't budget for a leasing expense or a leasing agent or pay someone else to show your properties, guess what? You just created a leasing job for yourself. If you didn't budget for mowing, you're like, well, the residents are responsible for mowing. Okay, well, what happens if they move out during periods of vacancy? That does happen. So now you just create a mowing job for yourself. So you either have to pay for it out of your pocket because the property is not budgeted for it, or you have to go do it yourself. So this is why every time when I sign off, I say, hey, if you don't place a value on your free time, someone else will. It's not just some cutesy little phrase I came up with. It's the absolute God's honest truth because that's how I was living my life. I wasn't budgeting my time highly enough. So as a result, I had created a bunch of miserable, low paid, low minimum wage, below minimum wage jobs that I was doing for myself.
So hopefully when you are investing in the, and you can, as long as you're budgeting for the amount of maintenance items, I'm not saying stay away from the properties in the war zones. You can do that and you can do that effectively as long as you're taking into account the net dollar effect on the properties. And that is all I have for today. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign off because my bride and I are gonna go watch our oldest smack that tater. Hopefully he's gonna get it out of the park. So uh, that's kind of what we're hoping for. But man, that kid's got an arm on him. I think I showed you the bruise on my hand from when he was throwing the ball, man. He's, he's got quite an arm on him. But anyway, <laughs> that's all I have for today, everybody. If you, again, if you, did, if you do want to get a copy, you can actually also get a copy. If you go to landlordcoach.com forward slash videos, there's, uh, there's also a free download there for the cash flow analysis calculator. And you can go in there, download that. It's a spreadsheet. And it'll show you what I'm talking about. Too, so make sure that you actually analyze your properties on the cash flow the right way. You can also get a copy of the Time Wealthy Investor 2.0 for free. And I will even sign it for you if you like. And uh, I'll get that out to you right away as well. Just all I ask you to do is cover shipping, and that will uh, that will help me out and help you out, and you'll get it a lot cheaper than you would normally get it from Amazon. So, all right. Well, uh, that is all I have for today. So please be sure to place a value on your free time, because if you don't, someone else will. But most important, there is no amount of time that will make time irrelevant. Have, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. How did I get that wrong? There's no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have an awesome day. I'll see you guys next time.